relationship. Something about the value. Because you want to make that impact. It can make you happy. Elevate others around Welcome us. to the Selling from the Heart podcast. Your home for authentic, effective, and socially integrated sales strategies to help you master the art of selling. Join your co-hosts Larry Levine and Daryl Amy, along with some of the world's best sales thought leaders and practitioners, as we explore ways to help you grow your sales. Hello and welcome back to the Selling from the Heart podcast. Your co-host Daryl Amy here today with Larry Levine. What's going on, Larry? You know what? Every time, it seems like every time we have a conversation, Daryl, we cook up something, but <laughs> before we go there, you know, we're in, we're into the last parts of summer and it seems like in Southern California, it went from summer to lighter versions of summer. It's just a little rub on the weather we have here. It's just so gorgeous. Well, hey, I think that's just the sign that uh, a couple of important things are happening. Number one, football <laughs> season is in full swing. And second of all, we're in the fourth <laughs> quarter. It's time to... <laughs> Time to get it done. And just like that football game, what happens in the fourth quarter of the sales year uh, is a really, really critical. And so we just want to let you know it's selling from the heart. We're cheering you on. We're cheering you on to uh, to finish strong this year. And by the way, if you're new to the Selling from the Heart podcast, welcome. You've joined a growing community of sales professionals that are dedicated to being genuine, being authentic, adding real value. We call it Selling from the Heart. And Larry, as this podcast airs, we will have just been coming off an incredible high, also known as the 2021 Trust Building Challenge. And uh, wow, what an incredible roster and the event. It's just so exciting when people get together, like-hearted people and say, hey, I want to grow. I want to become better at what I do. And we've we've always talked about it. We'll continue to talk about it, Daryl, is trust is the key factor. Trust is a key factor with anything because when there is no trust, things slow down to almost a complete halt in sales. And the exact opposite is true. When we can build trust, when we get speed to heart, things accelerate. And that's exactly what we need. So if you're listening in, you go, I missed it. I missed the trust building <laughs> challenge. Don't where panic. Were you? <laughs> <laughs> don't miss the next one. Uh, but don't panic. We actually recorded everything. So it is all available to you. Just go to the 2021 trustchallenge.com website, www.2021. Let's get the year right, Larry. 2021 <laughs> trustchallenge.com. And you'll get immediate access to the recordings. We'll also notify you about future challenges so you don't miss out. Speaking of something you don't want to miss out on, I just want to give a shout out to our friends at BombBomb. BombBomb is enabling us to rehumanize our communication. And right now in the, in the clutter of the inbox in the clutter of digital pollution, as our friends <laughs> Ethan and Steve like to say. Uh, it is so refreshing to have an incredibly simple tool that allows us to reach out and put a face on what is normally faceless communication. It's an, it's an incredibly simple tool that a lot of us just haven't taken advantage of is you talk about the inbox being cluttered. Just imagine when somebody opens an email and they see your face and they listen to your message and the excitement and the passion behind what you do as you lean in to the conversation as opposed to hiding behind your keyboard. Exactly. So try it out. BombBomb.com slash heart gets you free access for 14 days. And if you've already taken advantage of it, as I'm sure most, if not all Selling for the Heart listeners have, Share it with your coworkers, your friends, and uh, enable them to add a face to faceless communication as well. And let's bring some more authenticity to the world. And you know, if you think about the idea of sending out a personalized video, that is a great way to either <laughs> tee up or follow up on a call. However, the problem, Larry, you know where I'm going. I know exactly where you're going with this, Daryl. They got this little thing out there in sales that you may or may not have heard of called call reluctance. And we've got a guest today who is uh, I'm anything but reluctant to introduce. And that's our <laughs> friend, Connie Kadansky, to talk about call reluctance. Connie, welcome to Selling from the Heart. It's great to have you here. Oh, it's lovely to be here. Thank you. 
Well, and, and we're going to have a fantastic conversation today, but you know the question that every guest on the Selling from the Heart podcast gets, and that is, Connie, what does it mean to you to sell from the heart? Selling from the heart to me means that I hold my client's interest equal to my own, that I value the client as much as I value myself. Oh, oh so I, good. I love this. And you know what? And I love you even more, Connie, because you're wearing red. Thank you so much. <laughs> We're twins. It's better than Daryl and I being twins. So thank you. That is but that is that is a really powerful answer. And and I I love the heart of saying I'm gonna value the client's outcomes and value the client as much as I value myself. And that that level of perspective is powerful. So thank you for that. Connie, um call reluctance. Does this still exist in sales? Are you finding that salespeople are still reluctant to make calls? Yes. The pandemic has brought an epidemic of sales reluctance. What are you seeing out there in sales teams right now? Well, they're doing just like you mentioned, hiding behind the keyboard. And it is so important that I the phone is there salesperson's ATM machine and just to get comfortable picking up the phone and making those calls. So there are, there are 16 types of call reluctance and telephobia is only one type and it's the <laughs> easiest to overcome. Oh, so I, I want to dive into this, but as I'm listening to what you're saying, I'm, I'm thinking of our good old friend, Jeb Blunt over at Sales Gravy, because he says, nobody answers a phone that doesn't ring. <laughs> that's good <laughs> <Right>. telephobia <laughs> telephobia is fantastic so what do you do about what do you do if you've got telephobia or if you've got sales people on your team that have telephobia well so it's just using the phone picking up the phone to make that prospecting call so as you know when we make a prospecting call we are making an unsolicited call and so we just need to get comfortable with using the phone. And I overcame it in one morning in my office. So I was a sales call reluctant salesperson. <laughs> so I know what it feels like. I was taking a nap at two o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> and I decided this is something's going on here. I, I'm motivated. I'm goal oriented. And so I flew to Dallas and I went through a program years ago on fear-free prospecting. And here's something that is fascinating around the telephobia. So when people, our sense of smell can be very valuable to us. And when people smell something, it immediately takes their brain to another place. So we have a technique called sensory injection by using essential oils so think about it. If a salesperson is ready to punch in those numbers and they go, oh, <laughs> we've got 10 calls today or they don't want my product. Well, there is a little bit of work to do ahead of time, but I actually used frankincense. And so when I would feel that that fear, now I had done some preliminary work ahead of time in setting my mind, et cetera. I would just smell this frankincense and it would take me out of the fear because it instantaneously take me out of the fear. And I would just smell that and I'd punch in those numbers and off I'd go. <laughs> I love it. That's that's actually brilliant. I think I was I was thinking about actually a hundred dollar bill and smelling money could be a good one too, but frankincense probably smells well, I don't know, smelling money is pretty good, but that's that's really powerful. And that's um, I love that. Just like it's a state change, right? Saying I'm I'm gonna shift myself into a different different state. Am I am I tracking with you on that? Yes, yes, and it does. I have demonstrated in my workshops and have people smell something that instantaneously takes their brain to another place. So all the sales leaders out there, key in on this. Maybe maybe we've just put a is it frankincense? Well, that was the one that appealed to me. <laughs> I make, have to, make sure I you have, supply them all. <laughs> and I have male clients that golf 
and one of them found a scent that smelled like cut grass. So cool. this is really nothing. Sometimes people think that it's something to mock or be, you know, laugh about. It is in reality. If telephobia is their only type of call reluctance, like I said, there's 16 types. So if somebody has telephobia and over prepare or call reluctance where they're over analyzing the call, well, they, they got a, it, there's a combination there, right? So there are different techniques that help different people that have different types of call reluctance. Well, so what's another, I'm curious now, 16 types, this is fascinating. Um, what, what, is, what are some other types of call reluctance that you're finding are common and epidemic these days? So the number one type of call reluctance is yielder call reluctance. So the salesperson is very oriented around relationship building and they, they want to be friendly and folksy. So they're more focused on making a friend and a relationship than solving the prospect's problem. Mm -hmm. And so they have a tendency not to be, they don't want to be pushy. Oh, heavens, we don't want to be pushy. Well, we don't want to be pushy. However, we want to be very direct and very focused and very professional. So the yield or call reluctance, the thing is they can get in the door and get an appointment, but oftentimes they have a close reluctance. So they'll dance up to the close and they'll back off because they don't want to have any conflict with that prospect. So they have a tendency to be all about being of a being getting approved of and being liked. Mm hmm. And I always tease them. I say, do you ever get a check that it says down in that left-hand corner that you're getting a friendship bonus? <laughs> yeah, right. Well, no, because, but real quick, I want to talk about this because mm -hmm. I think this is this one, I think a lot of people can resonate to, the, the likeness factor, because I think it's the perception, right? Everyone flips the switch and they go, well, you know, there's, there's so much negativity around salespeople today that... I'd like to be liked, especially in the beginning. And I'm all about likes and relationships and so forth. But in the very beginning, they may not even know you very well, nor like you very well, but you have to bring some confident conversation to the forefront to get it to that point. Would y'all agree? Mm -hmm. Yes, good point. Because we're here to add value to our prospect and when I work with my clients on making that first prospecting call, basically they're trying to find out, is this person even interested in what I'm providing, right? And hopefully they've done enough homework to know that they are interested. We're looking for that prospect to have a shared interest, a shared interest at this time, meaning I'm interested, prospect or how much focus and attention do you put on this shared interest and then is there a shared care do they really give a darn do they really care about exploring this further and then number three is there a shared commitment to move forward in having that real nitty-gritty conversation where they're willing to interact and answer questions and have a conversation. So those are the three basics up front. Yeah. And you know, it, it comes back to what we were talking about in the trust building challenge is that trust formula, authentic relationship. Yes. We want to build authentic relationships. The other side of that coin is meaningful value. And if we get stuck in just the friend zone, um, without moving to value we're we're in, we're in a trap. You know, and, and the other way around, too, if all we do is hammer value and we aren't able to build enough of a relationship to even get to the point of of having that conversation and building that trust, we're in a trap, too. And I think that um, that reluctance to go there and to challenge and to, um, you know, to go past the the like uh, the like button, if you will, in the real world is is a big deal. What are some other uh, you've got my interest now, 16 <laughs> types of call reluctance, people. Um, Connie, what what's another kind of common call reluctance that you see out there these days? 
is role rejection call reluctance. So the salesperson is not really comfortable in their role. Mm. So they, they're they not comfortable in, they don't know their value enough or, and on one of the episodes that I listened to with Selling from the Heart was talking about, the gentleman was talking about sales managers because guess what? Sales managers and sales trainers can be the number one carriers of call reluctance. <laughs> Explain. <laughs> so, they, you know, where you're going with this one. <laughs> you, do you know, Larry? Well, I think because they're afraid to do it themselves. Well, or they they stereotype type the salesperson. Now, don't be going out there and doing this. Don't be like this and don't be like that. Well, a new salesperson is going, OK, you don't want me to do that. What you know, what should I be? Mm -hmm. like? But sales is a fascinating career and we add value. The world is revolves around the selling process. And so sol sales is solving people's problems for a profit. And so it's just getting comfortable in the role and not identifying with that stereotypical salesperson that we hear about from time to time. Mm -hmm. Focus on the ideal. Focus on the avatar of that ideal. Hey, I, I got a I got a question um, around call reluctance, and I think a lot of it. Do you think a lot of it has to do with the noise? And where I'm going with this is all the noise that salespeople see, whether that be on social platforms or things that they read where they say, well, cold calling is right. Fill in the blank with whatever excuse cold calling is dead or cold calling's not as effective as it used to be. So they come up with these excuses. They're reluctant to move forward. Do you see that playing a part in this as well? I'm just curious. Well, yes, uh, yes. However, when a salesperson really knows the value of yeah. what they do, where they just know it, they have embodied it, they have experienced the value with other clients, then they're more, they're more courageous. And so with the call reluctance, it's, it's really, we always say mindset, mindset. Well, who's setting the mind, right? Who is setting the mind? And salespeople, I mean, I don't like to hear a no, but for crying out loud, I always say, what does that no mean? Often, like I called somebody the other day, he was a director of communications, and I asked him if I could provide an article to his, his association magazine. He goes, no. <laughs> and he go, and so I go, OK, anyway, long story short, he's connected me with his CEO because I had enough like this is the value to your that your readers. Right. Mm -hmm. And so when we know our value and even with the no, it's kind of like, what do we make it mean when somebody tells us no? Right. And I was coaching a salesperson today and she sells a pretty tough product, which is reverse mortgage. A lot of people misunderstand it. And some people just slam down the phone. Well, you know, who wants to have the phone slammed down on them, right? So how do you emotionally handle something like that? A rude prospect, right? So a lot of times salespeople oh my gosh, this means this is going to throw me down the self-doubt <laughs> spiral. No, no. I. It's like, what am I making it mean? They're not having their best day, obviously, right? And so it's really learning those mental fitness skills to not allow that stuff to derail us. That's so such powerful. What a what a great and timely conversation. And one of the things I wanted to get into that's is very fascinating. And, and when you go to Connie's LinkedIn profile, you'll see just this incredible wealth of of science and knowledge uh, behind what you do. But where does how does neuroscience play into this? And and how has that affected your perspective and your prescription uh, for this epidemic of call reluctance? Well, so neuroscience is really about the brain, right? And so when we have an event, 
it triggers something in the brain. And when you really look at it, the fear center of the brain is the amygdala. Mm -hmm. And so that's where that's where the fear gets stimulated. And we can work on mental fitness skills so that we don't get triggered by an event. And that could possibly be perceived as negative, that we have that ability to self-command. What am I going to make that mean? I'm going to command myself. I am not going to go into the negativity around this. And so that's where neuroscience comes in, where we train our brain to take any event and neutralize it. What am I going to make it mean? Or how can this be a gift or an opportunity for me? So if a salesperson is not being effective on their prospecting calls, we don't want them to just keep making them, right? We want them to stand back and think about it and really work on what is my glitch here? What mm -hmm. is what I need to do? And so that's how we actually start training the brain to, to perceive things differently. And with prospecting, curiosity is an emotion. Get curious about the prospect, about this and that. So that's where neuroscience plays a part, that we can learn to command our brain. And we can train ourselves to, to intercept when we're having a saboteur or a negative intruder that's trying to talk us out of making that prospecting call, become acutely aware of it. And so the program that I work with, there's a daily app. So it actually helps people develop those skills, those mental skills. Oh, that's so good. Is there just real quick in the time we have left, can you coach our listeners on maybe a couple quick tips they can implement to overcome some of this if they have it? Well, yes. Okay. So number one, you have to have a why behind your what. And so what is it that you want to achieve professionally? Mm -hmm. And what do you want your bank account? How much do you want in your bank account? Do you want a home somewhere else? Or what is it you really want? And I know you've covered that with many of your guests. Mm -hmm. And then when you're ready to punch in those numbers and you hesitate, <laughs> immediately allow yourself to tune in to what is causing you to hesitate. It's kind of like the hand on the hot stove. When we put our hand on the hot stove, we, we pull back because it's painful. And when we tune in to this, you know, like ready to punch in a number and then we get a thought like, oh, what if they ask me a question I don't know the answer to? <laughs> That is the emotional disempowerment. Mm -hmm. But you must to get freedom. You must allow yourself to capture it. Write it down on paper. Nab that. Nab it right then and there so that you can flip it. So you can have you can change it to something else. And that takes some that takes some work. However, is tuning into the value. I mean, I was working with somebody and he sells life insurance and he just would tell himself, I'm on a rescue mission. I'm rescuing these people <laughs> today. Mm -hmm. Wow. He went from a from a new beginner to owning an insurance company to this day. Wow. And so that's what we do is now was that do you think that's doable? What I suggested for your listeners? I think uh, so. I, and yeah. I like the idea of, of you know, I, I'll just speak personally, like when there's a negative, you know, you have that amygdala hijack or that pops in, you know, my reaction, my gut reaction is just stuff that, get that out of here, get that out of here. But, but you're saying like, write it down, confront it and make a plan uh, of what you're going to do with it when it happens, right? Yeah. And that's where the sensory injection comes in too. Mm -hmm. That can, uh, when you're having, because... Fear is physical. People, where our heart starts beating yep. faster, our face turns red. <laughs> and so, and also is before you go, just take a deep breath. And what I encourage people to do before they make a prospecting call, close their eyes because that goes beyond the analytical mind. 
close your eyes, put a smile on your face, remind yourself of the value that you are creating for the prospect. Mm -hmm. Think about your family, how much you love them. Pick up the phone, punch in the numbers. That's powerful. You always see, I mean, I will tell you this. For a long time, Daryl and I have had some sidebar conversations on this, Connie. Forever and a day, I was petrified to use the phone. I don't know how I survived as long as I did in sales because <laughs> literally, I was afraid. I would I would do everything to avoid using the phone. Right. And I had to, I mean, I had to seek out the help of some other people as well. And this was well into my career. I mean, it's I love the topic of call reluctance because I think if we're open and honest with with ourselves, it happens to each and every one of us. It really does. At some point in our career, we're hit with call reluctance. Yes. I mean, the statistics are 40% of seasoned producers get hit with call reluctance. It can be as severe enough to threaten their career. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. And so it's, you know, it's having people, it takes humility to look in the mirror, just to look in the mirror and just say, how much is call reluctance costing me? It is costing millions. And then also, car reluctance is nothing to be embarrassed about. Living with it needlessly is. Because we can get beyond it. Yep. And sort of the, you know, sort of the moon. We just have to, because that's where the confidence comes in, right? Where we just get really authentically confident. And that's where we connect and sell from the heart because we're connected to the value. Beautiful. Yeah. Connie, what a great conversation. And I'm so thankful for the way you've been investing in us today. How can how can folks learn more? Well, if you're not call reluctant, <laughs> <laughs> you can pick up the phone. I think Connie's going to drop her number right now. <laughs> yes, pick up the phone. Call me at 602 <laughs> 5431. And when you do, you tell me you listen to Selling for the From the Heart podcast, and I will give you a collateral material that's going to help you get on the other side of this call reluctance. And then you can also Connie at exceptionalsales.com or please reach out to me on LinkedIn. And also on my website, I have an opt in. So I do get your information and it, there is a free prospecting EKG. So you can take this assessment, the paper and the pencil assessment and find out the severity of call reluctance. And then I have an, a, an assessment that measures for the call reluctance. There's a financial investment in that, but it tells you exactly what intensity and what type of call reluctance that you have. Brilliant. Oh, so good. So I good. love it. I love thank it. Thank you so much. Connie. Yeah, Connie, this has been fantastic. It's a pleasure to meet you. And uh, thank you once again for investing in us today. Fantastic. Well, thank you for having me. <laughs> uh, what, oh. what a great what a great topic and yeah. what a critical topic yes. in the middle of in the middle of all of this, especially, especially after you know the um I mean I, we've always call car reluctance has been around for a long time. Uh, but I think what Connie said at the beginning is it, there's some ways it kind of has amped up this last year. And and even as we're, you know, heading hopefully out of this pandemic or wherever, wherever we are. And, you know, there was there's there's there was a surge of call reluctance that happened last year. And I think it's really important that we get past that. And so the tools that she gave us today are are really, really powerful. Yeah, you know, and, and I'd ask all the listeners out there, Daryl, you know, as, as we're sitting here into the fourth quarter, is overcome that reluctance to use the phone. In fact, mm -hmm. overcome the reluctance to prospect in general, because it's what you guys do in the fourth quarter that's going to help you as you roll into the first and second quarter of 2022. I think so. And I really, you know, the alignment with Selling from the Heart, one of the things that Connie said that was so powerful was to really get in touch with your why. Why are you doing this? What's your, you know, what is your purpose? And uh, if you have not um, downloaded the self-reflection journal, the Selling from the Heart self-reflection journal, just go to sellingfromtheheart.net slash journal um, or text uh, heart to 21,000. That's heart to 21,000 and get that and start really connecting with your why because 
that I think is a critical component of this is being able to know uh, why are you doing this and and what's behind it. Well, Larry, this hey, I got, I got, I got, hey, I got to throw one more thing in there, only just because, right? No more sweaty palms, right? After you listen to this podcast with <laughs> Connie, right. no more sweaty palms. <laughs> Well, hey, thank you uh, once again to Connie. Thank you to everybody in the Selling from the Heart community. It is so amazing to be a part of a community of like-hearted salespeople uh, that are out there bringing their authentic selves uh, to prospecting in every aspect of the sales process. I want to say a huge thank you to everybody that contributed during the 2021 Trust Building Challenge. As we said at the beginning, if you want to pick up those recordings, go to 2021 trustchallenge.com. Thank you to everybody who's leaving reviews on the podcast, a platform on which you listen, whether it's iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, do us a favor, hit subscribe, um, and also go ahead and leave a review that helps us spread the message of this movement of bringing authenticity to the sales profession. So until next week, keep being genuine, keep being authentic, keep adding real value deal with call reluctance, and most of all, sell from the heart.